core data allows us to link entities together using relationships. And when we use at fetch request, core data sends all that back for us to use. However, this is one area where core data starts to show its age. To get relationships to work well, we have to make a custom NS managed object subclass that provides wrappers that are more friendly to SwiftUI. To demonstrate this, we're going to build two core data entities. One to track candy bars and one to track countries where those bars come from. Relationships come in four forms. A one-to-one -one relationship means that one object in an entity links to exactly one object in another entity. In our example, this would mean that each type of candy has one country of origin, and each country could only make one type of candy. A one-to-many relationship means that one object in an entity links to many objects in another entity. In our example, this would mean that one type of candy could have been introduced simultaneously in many countries, but that each country still could only make one type of candy. A many-to-one relationship means that many objects in an entity link to one object in another entity. In our example, this would mean that each type of candy has one country of origin, and that each country can make many types of candy. A many-to-many -many relationship means that many objects in an entity link to many objects in another entity. In our example, this would mean one type of candy had been introduced simultaneously in many countries, and each country can make many types of candy. All of those are used at different times. But in our candy example, the many-to-one relationship makes the most sense. Each type of candy was invented in a single country, but each country can have invented many types of candy. So open your data model and add two entities. Candy with a string attribute called name and country with string attributes called full name and short name. Although some types of candy have the same name, for example, Smarties in the US and the UK mean different things, countries are definitely unique, so please add a constraint for short name. That means selecting the country entity, going to the view menu, and choosing inspectors, show data model inspector, then clicking the plus button under constraints, and renaming the example to be short name. Before we're done with this model, we have to tell core data there's a one-to-many relationship between candy and country. So, with country selected, press plus under the relationships table. Call the relationship candy, change its destination to candy, then over in the data model inspector, change type to to many. Now select candy and add another relationship there. Call the relationship origin, Change destination to be country, then set its inverse to candy so core data understands the link goes both ways. That completes our entities. The next step is to take a look at the code Xcode generates for us. Remember to press Command S to force Xcode to save your changes. Select both candy and country and set their code gen to manual slash none. Then go to the editor menu and choose create NS managed object subclass to create code for both our entities. Remember to save them in the core data project group and folder. As we chose two entities, Excel will make four Swift files for us. Candy plus core data properties.swift will be pretty much exactly what you expect, although notice how origin is now a country. Country plus core data properties.swift is more complex because Xcode also made some methods for us to use. Previously, we looked at how to clean up core data's optionals using NS managed object subclasses. But here, there's a bonus complexity. The country class has a candy property that's an NS set. This is the older Objective-C data type that's equivalent to Swift set, but we can't use it with Swift UIs for each. To fix this, we have to modify the files Xcode made for us, adding convenience wrappers that make Swift UI work well. For the candy class, this is just a matter of wrapping the name property so it always returns a string. Public var wrapped name returns string. Name, nil coalescing, unknown candy. For the country class, we can create the same string wrappers around short name and full name, like this. Public var wrapped short name, string, returning short name, nil coalescing, unknown country. And public var wrapped full name, also a string, returning full name or unknown country. 
However, things are more complex when it comes to candy. This is an NS set, which could contain anything at all, because Cordata hasn't restricted it to just instances of candy. So, to get this thing into a useful form for SwiftUI, we have to first convert it from an NS set to a set of candy. A Swift native type, we know the types of its contents. Second, convert that set of candy into an array so that for each can read individual values from there. And third, sort that array so the candy bars come in a sensible order. Swift actually lets us perform sets two and three in one because sorting a set automatically returns an array. However, sorting the array is harder than you might think. This is an array of custom types, so we can't just use sorted and let Swift figure it out. Instead, we have to provide a closure that accepts two candy bars and returns true if the first candy should be sorted before the second. So please add this computed property to country now. Public var candy array returns an array of candy. Let set equals candy conditional typecast set of candy or an empty set. And return set.sorted $0.wrap name is less than $1.wrap name. That completes our core data classes, so now we can write some Swift UI code to make all this work. Open contentView.swift and give it these two properties. At environment, manage object context var mock. At fetch request, entity, country.entity, sort descriptors, empty array, var countries, fetch results, country. Notice how we don't have to specify anything about the relationships in our fetch requests. Core data understands the entities are linked, so it'll just fetch them all as needed. As for the body of the view, we're going to use a list with two for each views inside it. One to create a section for each country, and one to create the candy inside each country. This list will in turn go inside a vStack, so we can add a button below to generate some sample data. So change your body to this. vStack, list, for each countries, id self, country in, section with a header of our country's wrapped full name. Inside there we'll say for each country dot candy array, id self again, and candy in, and then text candy dot wrap name. Below the list we'll have a button with an add title, and when it's tap we'll add some example candy. I'll say let candy one equals some candy in our context. Give the name Mars. Create a country for it. Short name will be UK. With the full name United Kingdom. Then some more candy. Name Kit Kat. Again a new country. Again from the UK. Then a third candy bar. Name Twix. Again, comes from the UK. Turns out we like chocolate, who knew? And candy four, uh, I'll do Toblerone, something different. This is from CH, which of course is Switzerland. And then save our manage object context. Make sure you run that code, because it works really well. All our candy bars are automatically sorted into sections when the add button is tapped. Even better, because we did all the heavy lifting inside our NS Manage Object subclasses, the resulting Swift UI code is actually remarkably straightforward. It has no idea that an NS set is behind the scenes, and is much easier to understand as a result.